What's going on, BFL fam? I'm Carlos. Please welcome Steve Asus from Killian Paris. Back to BFL. Long time no see. Yeah. <laughs> I had so much fun last time, I said, let's do it again. I think I had more fun than you. Awesome. So, so mutual fun. Today we have five fragrance suggestions from Killian Paris for you guys. Keep it right there and we'll tell you what they are. Brooklyn fragrance lover. Thanks so much for tuning in to BFL today as always. I really do appreciate it and hope you're all doing fantastic. Welcome back, sir. Good to see you. Likewise, likewise. So what do we got here? So we've got the Killian fall favorites lined up, just ready for you to experience them again. Um, and these are exciting fragrances. So why don't we just get started with what are some of our Killian fall favorites? Sure. You guys watching definitely have your own favorites. Definitely leave them in the comments. Can I tell them to do that? Of course. <laughs> leave them in your comment. True story, I read every single comment that, uh, on your page. I love them. So why don't we get started with Intoxicated. Okay. So the first fragrance is Intoxicated. Mm -hmm. You've smelled this before. Yes. We'll re-experience it. Um, I'm going to present the fragrance to you actually in the way that we present them with okay. the inspiration of the fragrance. So Intoxicated is a fragrance that's inspired by a trip that Killian took to Turkey. Okay. So he was in Istanbul and every single morning he went through this like incredible ritual where they would bring him like a tray of coffee. Um, it was a Turkish coffee. There was a cardamom seed there, a little lacum dessert. Um, and he experienced this every single morning when he went back to Paris he decided to recreate this into a fragrance. I have had that Turkish coffee experience with the cardamom and everything. Not in Turkey though. <laughs> Dude, I have it every Saturday. My wife is from Syria, so this is all they do. Um, but it, it's definitely, uh, you definitely smell the cardamom coming right out of you. It's really funny because when I first smelled this, when it first was presented, I thought it reminded me of Amen from Mugler. I've heard it. Um, but if you really dig into the fragrance, it's just a passing resemblance. It's not, it doesn't wear like that on skin entirely at all, in my opinion. You know what it is? It's coffee, right? So whenever mm -hmm. you, like, I mean, I think they were one of the first to do kind of the whole like coffee thing. And when you smell coffee, you immediately go back to that. This is definitely a fresher scent because of that cardamom, right? Mm -hmm. So that's really like your point of difference here is it's a kind of a fresh scent. But when we talk about fall, we talk about a fragrance that's sexy, that's a little bit warm, um, and that you can definitely wear. I mean, this is a lot of my friends. This is like they're going out fragrance. Awesome. They're wearing this every day, right? So Sounds good. So this is not one that I own, but one that I do like. And this awesome box would look really good just about in anyone's home. So this is actually, <laughs> fun fact, meant to be like a little cigar box. So the insert can remove it. Ah, and cool! Yeah, you can do just what anything you want with that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna pull I, a little. I did not know that. I'm gonna do a little Carlos right here. <laughs> there we go. Get my fingerprints. What's out. really going on here is I'm gonna retire soon, and he's uh, <laughs> learning how to do this, and he's, he's gonna take no, over my shoes. I, and I, uh, I can't do it, dude. I can't be like you. Um, Thank you. <laughs> yeah, I mean, listen, you're good at what you do. I'm good at what I do, and I love spending time with you. That's why I'm here. So, all, all right, right. Let, let's go to the next one, right? So the next fragrance one of my favorite fragrances ever right like on the list of like steve's ever uh, yes. fragrance mm -hmm. you find the black phantom and not because it comes in this awesome box maybe a little because <laughs> of that right but the black phantom fragrance a fragrance that we launched i mean it's still fairly new i mean we launched this fragrance it's i think in 2017 two years ago right? yeah steve and i reviewed it steven from adolescence i think it's a great fragrance so the fragrance is inspired by gothic horror, right? So okay. like Killian loves gothic horror. Phantom of the Opera, think like Dracula, the portrait of Dorian Gray. You know, I think what a lot of people don't know is he even named his son Dorian after this period. So wow. when you think about like these like dark, mysterious characters, this is what you're getting with the Black Phantom. I love this one, I own this one. It's got a great nutty facet about it. It's kind of gourmandish, but not entirely or is it to you? Uh, 
totally a gourmand. To totally me. a gourmand. That's to it. me, right? But listen, to me. It's I, delicious. Bottom line. So check it out. You've got rum. You've got Irish cream coffee. Oh. And there's an accord in there called the cyanide accord, which is really unique. And everyone's like, is there poison in this? No, like, seriously. What the hell? I mean, you got the skull. you got the cyanide accord. Um, the cyanide accord is almond because cyanide comes from the almond. Yes. Right? I did know that. So, I mean, that's kind of like that smooth almond you're getting. So this is definitely unisex, as is the first one. Do you find that women go for Phantom? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Definitely. So I, I think that a woman could definitely pull this one off. Oh, without a doubt. I mean, I think all oh, these So delicious. I love this one. It'll go on my... Oh, we'll see. And I love that you put, like, the blotter so far. You've been through the service. <laughs> <laughs> So the next fragrance, this is gonna open up like Pandora's box. Like, is this a woman's fragrance? Is this a man's fragrance? Let's just talk about the fragrance first, right? Sure. So, Woman in Gold, a fragrance that's inspired by Killian's love for Gustav Klimt, right? So for those of you that don't know Gustav Klimt, he was a painter that painted the Woman in Gold, uh, the portrait of Adele Blockbauer. Um, what Killian loved the most about this painter is that there was one year from 1906 to 1907 where he painted everything in gold. So Killian, wanting to create a fragrance that was gold, used mostly all gold ingredients. So you've got honey, you've got star anise, bergamot, yellow rose, all of these um, ingredients have like that yellow goldish color to mm -hmm. them. And he asked this question, right? So if you can wear liquid gold on your skin, what would it smell like? Bam. Talk about, first of all, the fragrance that's like rising through the rankings for us, right? The story of getting in trouble, they're saying that, but it's cool, right? Amazing scent. I really do love this one. When I reviewed this one along with Golden Gold, Gold Night, Gold Night mm. I preferred this one much better. I found uh, Gold Night just a little too animalic honey thing going on. It was OD, but I'm sure there's, you know, a consumer for that. This one just hits all the right notes for me. It's um it's it's bright. It's it's warm, happy, bright, and it has a life about it to me. Oh yeah, it's <laughs> I mean it's a complex scent. <clears throat> it definitely screams confidence. Um and you know, yes, it's called Woman in Gold. I know so many men that wear this fragrance. I mean I have a business manager I'm gonna shout him out right now, right? <laughs> but he's one of our managers at one of our stores. His name is Michael. He always comments on your videos. This is his <laughs> scent, right? And it just smells incredible on him. So listen, it's- Woman in gold, big deal. It's kind of like with Frederick Mount Portrait <clears throat> of a Lady. It's not for a lady, it's about- There you go. Blah, 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 et cetera, et cetera. But so guys, if you haven't checked this one out, definitely give it a try. It's just an incredible scent, right? Just really well I do, made. do. I do do. I, I do, do you like really it do, a do? lot. <laughs> yeah, in the morning, you know. Oh my god. <laughs> After my coffee. Hey, <laughs> almost messed up your set here. So how do we feel so far? We like the fall. Yeah, fix? totally, right. totally, totally. So the next one is, I mean, a legend, right? And, and someone recently asked Killian, which one of your fragrances is your favorite? And he said, like, you know, like the normal answer, like I can't pick a favorite. They're it's all like, like picking my kids. your favorite child, yeah. But he did add. But there's always that one kid that goes to Harvard, Harvard. right? You were there for that. Yes. <laughs> and, and that fragrance is the Straight to Heaven fragrance, right? Aha! Uh -huh. So Straight to Heaven, White Crystal, a fragrance that's inspired by like a memory. So, you know, Killian's a Hennessy. He used to wake up every, well, first of all, he grew up in the Hennessy Castle. Mm -hmm. He used to wake up every morning. He used to go to the cellars with his grandfather and they would fill up the cognac barrels in the cellars all the way to the top. And the next day, there would be some missing. So Killian's <laughs> grandfather, right? So this is like a little Hennessy family story for you. Killian's grandfather used to like toy with like little Killian and ask him like, where did it go? Like, where did the cognac go? And he would point to the ceiling and there would be stains from the evaporation. And he told them that it was going straight to heaven. Ah, That's, wow. And that is actually Love where it. the name comes from. And then you smell the fragrance and you're just getting this boozy, woody, uh, beautiful just simply fantastic fragrance you know what killian calls this fragrance what the sex magnet 
Is that right? It's right. <laughs> I've got to get myself one of these. It's literally on the education these. materials. Hmm. I mean, it is an incredible scent. It's meant to be like a addictive, like an exotic potion. How does the extreme version compare to this, or was it a fresh version? There were many. So there was a fresh mm -hmm. a while ago, um, and there was an extreme. The extreme version was an overdose of that rum. Okay. Yeah. And I know that there's been a lot of people commenting reading your comments and looking mm -hmm. into them that they want the extreme to come back my answer to that is stay tuned because All right. very very soon i love little inside info hints here at bfl of course you know what i that got overshadowed for me as a consumer of bikelian products mm. i was so in love with love i was so in love with beyond love and um the absinthe one the green yeah. one taste of heaven that this just wasn't my favorite, but now smelling it 10 or so years later, yeah, I really do have an appreciation for that. Yeah, I, Not I, because, I'm, you know, it just no, no, it really I, smells good to me. You know what it is? I also think a lot of customers feel the same way because this fragrance is, it's always been one of our top selling scents, mm -hmm. right? Um, but now there's like a resurgence. I think a lot of it also has to do with the customer's taste in fragrance, kind of evolving into like some of the more deeper scents, into the more, I don't want to say gourmand, but definitely the deeper, the orientals, the spices. Um. And at some point, like, it's like, not word of mouth, it's kind of word of nose. People smell something on someone. What is that you're wearing? Where'd you get it? Oh, and they tell a friend and then it smells so wonderful on them and then their cousins and their family, you know. You know, we have, um, you know, I talk a lot about culture and fragrance and the, the culture in the U.S. when it comes to fragrance is actually quite new. Right. Mm -hmm. I, I, first of all, I'm not saying that you know it's bad that it's new. I've been into fragrance since I'm like 14. I'm, I'm you, older. You're old. <laughs> <laughs> but but in itself, right? The culture is kind of new, and that's why, like, when you think about it, like most people tend to go for like fresh and clean, mm -hmm. right? Just because it's like easier. Um, but I, I really we see a shift now. And to your point, like many people won't buy a fragrance. If they smell a fragrance like this, they might not buy it right away. They might mm -hmm. tend to go for something a little bit more fresh. But then when you smell it on someone else, there's like a comfort level yeah. that, that comes with that. Um, and I think we see a huge shift. I mean, I I worked for like six years for Tom Ford, right? And I remember... Wow. I remember One of my favorites. Yeah. So um, I remember when, when I was there and, um, you know, Black Orchid and Oud Wood were like the thing, right? Like 2007. You know, people used to come up and like smell Black Orchid and Oud Wood and be like, mm, like, oh. What is that, right? <laughs> I mean, think about it. Like these fragrances became staples. Like oud wood became like the first designer oud on the market. Um, so I no, not not really. M seven from M seven had oud in it. Yeah, right. but it wasn't in the name or so like so blatant. The spotlight, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But um, you know what I mean? Like it, there's definitely a shift that's happening with the consumer. So um, I love that you appreciate this. I love that like you know many customers now are definitely smelling this and they're like wow this is this smells amazing like i was telling you before i have a couple of reviews coming up here at bfl of things that nine years ago i was like oh what is this gross get it away <laughs> get it off my skin that now i actually love and crave for i'm not gonna tell you what it is but i'll tell you in the video you're gonna tell me later yeah i'll tell you later <laughs> but you know a lot of these i mean i grew up with the freshies and designers right, and right. um when i discovered Tom Ford and how I discovered Tom Ford was I was helping a woman from the Sephardic community. She smelled fantastic. I was like, what are you wearing? She told me what it was. I went to uh, Bergdorf and then I saw the private blend collection and then mm. that was it. The rabbit hole opened wide and I was full face down in that hole. And you've been in that hole for yeah, quite some time. Totally. <laughs> but, but you know, I was thinking before like culture and, and how I've been a fry kid since I'm 14 years old. I remember what I wore in high school. But back then, it didn't matter who the perfumer was or mm. what notes they were or what the company's about, blah, blah, blah. It wasn't until about 10, 11, 12 years ago that I started opening up my perfume palette and getting into by Killians and Tom yeah. Ford's and all those other, the other world of fragrance out there, the real world of fragrance out there. But I still have my designer love still yeah, yeah i don't yeah. forget where i come from there you go mm -hmm. um no but i love that and i love that you're able to see that the two differences and um no these are definitely how can i say it 
there's that it's not that there's levels to fragrance but i think there's almost different interpretations of fragrance right on the market and this is definitely a different type of interpretation than like a designer fragrance brand right so uh definitely but uh, um you know even when it came to killian paris's oud offerings they weren't overly challenging i mean the most challenging one for me that i can recall from your line is uh dark lord dark oh what a beautiful but when you story. told me the story behind dark lord i was Ooh. i had a different appreciation Ooh. for it oh. we can tell you the story later but let's wrap up with the ones we have here this is going to be an odd one because this is good girl gone bad extreme extreme like <laughs> i didn't even want to bring out the regular good girl like we went extreme with this one right so good girl gone bad extreme for those of you who don't know it's a fragrance that's inspired by adam and eve right and it's inspired by eve being this like temptress how she takes a bite out of the forbidden fruit mm -hmm. hence there's a snake that's on the bottle um but the fragrance itself is really described as a like a whirlwind of flowers the original good girl gone bad had a white uh clutch, clutch. yep now this is in black i think it looks a lot more appealing to a man maybe does I mean, the inside come out to put cigars in there? Absolutely. Okay. <laughs> to, to put a lot of things you want in there. <laughs> so, Good Girl Gone Bad, I mean, it, first of all, it's our number one selling fragrance. Anyone who hasn't tried it, I definitely recommend you go out and try it. But tell them over there. <laughs> what over there? Dubai. Well, yeah, so if you didn't watch the last video. <laughs> so, oh. um, I, I always share, well, no, I... Yeah, but I always share that um, in Dubai, this happens to be the number one selling fragrance we have to men, right? So good girl gone bad, good girl gone bad, extreme. What you're getting with the extreme, first and foremost, is this like overdose of the vanilla to make it more floral. And the fragrance itself is already built on a tuberose. You may not know this, but tuberose is like such, an, such a personal flower for Killian. I mean, his mom wore it growing up, his wife wore it when he met her. That's like what she told him she said she liked. Um, oh, his aunties. His aunt, yeah, you know the story. So this one is definitely pushing that good girl to the extreme. For those that were good girl, this is definitely a fragrance that's incredible for you. But it also attracts people that don't wear the fragrance, which is very interesting to me. I, I really do love this. <laughs> this is absolutely too. gorgeous. Um, it doesn't have the... When I first smelled the original, I'll never forget that day. Why? Um, because I, I was so blown away. The uh, whatever fruit, peach, apricot, whatever it was, it was so realistic and so juicy mm. and so different from anything that I ever smelled before at that point. Now I've smelled a lot of stuff like that. But the lushness or, or the juiciness or that sweetness of the uh, fruity part is not so prevalent there. Yep, it's not. You're getting a little bit more of like that warm, I would wow. say the undertone. Yep. I confess, BFL, that I would wear Good Girl Gone Bad Extreme <laughs> in a heartbeat. Wow. Look. It's just a sexy fragrance, right? And you know... Amazing. So number one, when it comes to this fragrance, yes. Men can wear it, women can... Again, we don't look at it's that. It's just that, right? the uh, what are you wearing thing. Good Girl Gone Bad. Good Girl Gone Bad. What? Is it Good Girl Gone Bad? I mean, listen. <laughs> A lot of men wear this. I talk about Dubai all the time being like our number one customers are male. That also has to do with the culture. I mean, like what's trending right now in different parts of the world is not necessarily what's trending here. Um, you know, I think it would fascinate you in, in the Middle East right now. The biggest trend that you can have in fragrance is wearing four or five different fragrances together paired with two or three different body lotions together to oh, really man. give you like your own unique scent that no one can replicate. Right, and, and I, this happens all the time. Like I'll be in a store, and we'll have like this like princess from like somewhere in the Middle East come, mm -hmm. and she's walking from like counter to counter, right? And she's spraying a little bit of this one, and then she's going to the other counter. She's spraying a little bit of that one, and everyone's looking at her like, what the hell? You know what? What the hell is she doing? And I'm sitting there like, wow, she's gonna smell so different. She's gonna smell so unique. But that's the goal: smelling like some like, like smelling like something that no one can replicate. Mm -hmm. um, Whereas here, like, uh, you know, sometimes I see people walking around and they're like, oh, we're wearing the same fragrance. Okay. <laughs> I'm telling you that <laughs> this, if this was in another bottle, in another more masculine type of presentation, and you didn't say the name Good Girl Gone Bad, 
tons of guys would love this. Oh yeah, I mean, first of all, we sell it in a carafe, which is a giant looking, <laughs> giant looking cognac carafe that's very masculine looking. Um, those big ones he still has. Or yeah, those? the the big the big carafe. Yeah, yeah, we make it in Good Girl Gone Bad Extreme, and um, ah oh, yes, yes, yes. I I just with the yeah. But, that, but, but again, like we talked about this last time, like to me, and again, this is my opinion, right? Everyone's got an opinion. I'm definitely going to read a comment of someone saying this guy doesn't know what you're talking, like he's talking about. You're probably right. I put on a, <laughs> I put on a double. <laughs> Sorry. But I don't see gender when it comes to fragrance, right? Like, like you can say maybe like the name is a little bit something, but to me, like what I think the thing that bothers me the most, like there's a few things that really bother me. One of them is when you see a bottle that says like for him and for her. Fragrance is universal, mm-hmm. man. You know what I mean? And I think if you smell this fragrance and you like it, go for That's it. That's all just marketing, really. It is. Because most heads of companies, most perfumers, at least the ones I've met, and I've met a lot. <laughs> I was just looking at my people I know in the business. <laughs> my card stack is like that big. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> so, anywho, um, they'll tell you that that is all just marketing. Of course, there are fragrances that are blatantly... Like, like Michael Kors fragrance, the two bros ones, those are really, really feminine. But I would argue <laughs> there would be someone that wears it and thinks that they smell really sexy wearing it, right? Wear what you want, <laughs> not what they tell you to like and all that stuff. Blah, blah, blah. You've heard it all before. And you guys should all know that by now. And I'm sure you do, you do follow that credo. Yeah, I mean, I read the comments. I mean, I think it was the topic we talked about was like so fascinating to the audience <laughs> when they were just like, yeah, wear what you love. Yeah, you know, um, de- definitely. You know, I think the other thing, now that we're on the topic. He just bought this so I could buy a bottle. You know, you're sneaky. You like this one. I, I'm, I'm, I really I'm going to do. do a double spray too. <laughs> good really good. good. Because that, um, the overly feminine peachy apricot, which one is it? Apricot. Apricot. Apricot, apricot tinged apricot. osmanthus. Which, that's another note that I love because that has an apricot facet about it. Mm-hmm. Um, it's not quite as so pronounced and prevalent in, in this composition. Yeah. So how do you feel when you wear it? I haven't worn this. But you're wearing it right now. How does it make you feel? It's just really something that I would not mind getting with of myself all day long. And I know for a fact that everyone at work, guys and girls, would appreciate this. Yeah, it just smells different. It smells really good. So these are the fall faves. Mm-hmm. What'd you think? I know which one you like the most. <laughs> well, I fell in love. I just found the new love here, and I love this one a lot. And newfound respect for um, Straight to Heaven. Women in Gold. Women, Women in Gold, gold. I love. Not as much as this one, though. <laughs> this is the one. Good Girl Gone Bad Extreme. Intoxicated, I do like. But my love loves are this and this and Straight to Heaven. I like that. So you guys should let us know what your favorite Killian Paris fragrances are by leaving a comment down below in the comment section. Thanks so much for joining me today. And by the way, I have some good news. What's that? So something happened because of your audience. What? <laughs> I, I'm going to share this with you. I can't believe I didn't share when I walked <laughs> in. So we posted a video of us. I think it was during the Rolling in Love video, mm-hmm. which by the way is an incredible fragrance, like the hottest fragrance we've had at Killian. But we posted a video with the Discovery set. And as soon as we posted it, I was like reading the comments and everyone's like, I can't find it. It's sold out. It's sold out. <laughs> Remember that set with the eight yeah, for 195? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So because of that, first of all, we sold out instantaneously. Like mm-hmm. I think when we posted that, but we actually just got so many more in from Paris. I just wanted to be the one to like announce it to your, to your fans because they were like, we can't find it anywhere. I know you always leave our boutique number. In the in, mm-hmm. the in the little description box, and I will do. If, if someone is go, interested, I will do that today as well. So if I someone's interested, they're back, and thank you guys for pointing it out um, that we were sold out. So if you were looking for that and you were disappointed before, now you can get your hands on that beautiful item. It really is a great set. I kind of wooed and odd over it when I saw it myself. Hope you enjoyed this presentation with Steve Asus from Killian Paris. If you're new to this channel, please do consider subscribing. If you haven't a subscriber, click on the bell icon to miss notifications on the reviews and content giveaways and all the fragrant fun and great guests here at BFL. Take care, stay blessed, and we'll see you at the next review.